Hello, welcome to the Villages Florida. My name is David. I'm a realtor with Florida Realty Investments. And every week I take a look at what's happening to the real estate market here in the Villages. We take a look at long-term trends and we take a look at the different regions of the Villages. I'll show you how I've broken the Villages into four regions, the North, the Middle North, the Middle South, and the South. And you can actually see a comparison between the different regions, how many homes are available for sale, uh, what the uh, median size and prices are. There are a couple of things I'd like to point out before we get started. Uh, first, in the villages, there are two marketplaces, the VLS and the MLS. Uh, if you want to see properties on the MLS, you generally need an MLS broker. And if you want to see properties on the VLS, you need a VLS broker. So buyers in the villages really need two representatives. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to see everything for sale. Also, sellers have to decide whether they want to list their property on VLS or MLS. They can't list it on both. A point I'd like to make is that if you are a buyer and you'd like a data-focused approach, if you'd like some confidence that the price you're getting is a good price or a fair price or a great price, some way of uh, comparing current uh, listings to previous sales and homes going pending, a way of analyzing home sizes and price per square foot, uh, I can show you how we can do it all graphically, and I'll give you a brief uh, look at that when we look at uh, the listings in the villages by, uh, by size and by price per square foot. Uh, also, please, if you find this information valuable, please consider liking and or subscribing uh, to the channel. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, also, we have a website, davidisinflorida.com. You can reach us uh, either through that website, davidisinflorida.com, or uh, you can reach me at davidisinflorida at gmail.com. Uh, if you're trying to get a great deal in the villages uh, as a buyer, or you're trying to maximize your return as a seller, please reach out to me. The recent uh, National Association of Realtors Settlement uh, makes it seem as if buyers might be responsible for paying their own agents. If you have any ideas as to how my data-driven approach could be useful for you, if you're considering buying in the villages here, please get in touch with me. I have some ideas as to how uh, the recent changes could be used to your advantage. Similarly, if you're a seller, please consider reaching out to me. We can strategize as to whether VLS or MLS is a better marketplace for you to list on. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at what's happening this week. We start every week by taking a look at interest rates. This chart is showing you the yield on the government 10-year note. Mortgage rates most closely track this maturity. And looking at this graph, you can see uh, rates over the last two years or so. We're currently right around four and a quarter percent on the 10-year bond, which puts us uh, around six and a half-ish on the mortgage rate. Anybody's guess as to whether we go higher or lower from here. I would caution you, though, with the amount of bonds the government is now having to sell every month or quarter, maybe hard for rates to move lower. Here we start our deep dive into the villages real estate market specifically. Here we're looking at the total number of listings, which this week is 378, down 10 from the 388. That was in effect the week before, but this is still higher than the 356 listings that were active same week a year ago. Currently, uh, prices in the villages range from 122,500 to 1,650,000. We're going to look at long-term charts for a moment longer before we break down the differences between the different regions of the villages. Here we're looking at the median listing price for all listings in the villages, which this week is $260.10 a foot, up about a dollar from the $259.35 that was in effect uh, the week before. But this is still lower than the $261.89 that was in effect uh, the same week a year ago. Prices in the villages on a median basis seem basically unchanged for about the last year. This is a proprietary tool that we have. We can analyze every single uh, active listing on the MLS and the villages currently. And that's what you're looking at on this map where every circle represents a property for sale and the color of the circle represents the price per square foot. The lighter the circle, the more expensive per square foot and the larger the circle, the larger the home. As I said, this is uh, the entirety of the villages, and now let's take a look at the individual regions. We're only looking at active listings on these maps currently, and what we're looking at here is the area that I'm analyzing and referring to as the villages north. 
This is the area where the northern boundary is Highway 42 and the southern boundary is Highway 466 and it does include the Spanish Springs area. This is the area I'm referring to as the mid-north. The northern boundary is Highway 466 and the southern boundary is 466A. Once again, I'm currently showing you active listings only. This is the area I'm referring to as the mid-south. The northern boundary is Highway 466A and the southern boundary is Highway 44. And this is the area that I'm referring to as the south, which is everything south of Highway 44. I would mention here that if you are interested in buying in the south, you really should look at everything on MLS and on VLS. VLS has more listings in the south currently than the MLS, but the point remains that without looking at everything on both marketplaces, you won't be seeing everything for sale. I wanted to interject to give you a brief understanding of what this tool can be used for. What I've done here is show you all active listings in the villages, but this is only those homes constructed in 2004 or earlier. So we can slice and dice this data any number of ways. This obviously would be helpful for somebody looking for an older home that they could possibly improve. Or if you wanted to limit your search only to newer homes, or if you wanted to search only for homes with pools or uh, any other criteria that you wish, we can narrow down the search and get a good visual representation as to what's been happening. So now that I've explained the four regions of the villages, let's take a look at all the active listings and uh, how many of them appear in each of the regions. As you can see, all regions is the villages in its entirety. The north, middle north, middle south, and south are as described. And what you're looking at is the total number of listings in each region, what the median size of the properties are. For example, in the north, 1,392 square feet, and in the south, 1,504 square feet. And you can also see the uh, least and most expensive homes for sale in those regions. For example, in the Middle South, the least expensive home is $288,000, and the most expensive is over $2 million. We're going to have a couple more perspectives on the same data. Here we're looking at listings once again. And here you see how many properties there are in each of the regions uh, sorted by price. So, for example, uh, you can see that in the villages as a whole, uh, most of the properties for sale are somewhere less than $500,000, whereas uh, in the Middle South, you can see that the price distribution is very different to that in the North and Middle North. This is the same data, maybe easier to see this way. You're seeing the four regions of the villages, and you're uh, seeing how many properties are currently available in each of those price ranges in each of those regions. And this is the last one, same data, number of listings broken down by region and price. You can see that in the villages, uh, the three to $400,000 range, by far the most active price segment, 35 properties in the mid-north, 10 in the mid-south, 95 in the north, and 10 in the south are available in that price range. And finally, we're looking at how long homes are staying on the market. This is the median time on the market for all homes. What you're looking at here is uh, data broken down by house size. So, for example, in the north, you can see that most of the homes are somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 square feet, whereas in the middle north, it seems to be uh, more between 1,000 and 2,000 square feet. In the uh, villages as a whole, the median time on the market is 45 days, and there are 87 properties that have been on the market over 100 days. In the south, the median time on the market, 41 days. In the north, median time on the market, 44 days. This is a graph that we think is illuminating. It shows the number of new listings and the number of homes going pending week by week. You can see that this week there were 36 new listings and 47 homes went pending. Last week, 55 new listings and 55 homes went pending. Last year, 38 homes were newly listed and 45 homes went pending. We need to see pending home sales keep pace with new listings or else the increase in supply will definitely weigh on this market. This chart is a summary of the previous chart. It just shows you the difference between new listings and homes going pending. Prints above the zero line are positive, meaning more homes going pending than being listed. Prints below the zero line are negative. Good to see, at least this week, that more homes went pending than were listed. So now let's take a close look at what happened last week. These are the homes that went pending over the last seven days. 
They went pending at a median price of 246.95 a foot, down from the 250.23 of the previous week, and also down from the 255.45 that was in effect for the same week a year ago. The data you're looking at are actual weekly numbers, whereas the graph is a four-week moving average. We'll keep looking at what happened last week. These are the homes that went pending last week. What was the price change from the original list price? A reduction of 4.74%, worse than the 4.56% that was required the week before, and even worse than the 4.62%. That was the median reduction for the homes that went pending a year ago. Now let's take a look at sales. Here we're looking at uh, homes that sold and closed over the last seven days. They're numbered 48, uh, improvement from the 36 homes that closed the week before, and uh, almost twice as many as closed the year before, which was only 26. Homes that closed last week ranged in price from 190000 to $1.36 million. And here we look at the price per square foot realized on the homes that closed last week and a nice jump from 253 to 267 a foot, uh, even improved from the 258 of a year ago. This 267 median price per square foot on homes closing is the highest that we've seen over the last year. Now we're going to take a look at all listings again and we're going to examine how many of them have reduced their asking price from the original listing price. Last week, 56.65% of listings had reduced their asking price compared to only 55.15% uh, the previous week. And this is far worse than the 51.69% of listings that had reduced their asking price the same week a year ago. And what was the price decrease? We're looking at a 4.95% median decrease for all listings, worse than the 4.86% median decrease that was in effect for the week before, and almost as bad as the 5% median decrease that was in effect for the same week a year ago. That is this week's look at the Villagers real estate market. If you are trying to get a good deal here and you'd like some data to back up your decision on a price or a value, please reach out to me at davidisinflorida at gmail.com or at davidisinflorida.com. Also, if you're looking to sell your home and you're trying to maximize your return in a reasonable period of time, davidisinflorida.com, I'll be happy to help you. If you have any questions about life in the villages itself, if you have any questions about real estate here, or questions generally, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help. Hope to hear from you. Take care.